on the road. We're live. Cheers, you guys. Welcome to the, what month is it? I've had it yet. <laughs> April edition <laughs> of Drinks <laughs> with <laughs> Authors. <laughs> We're back this month chatting and shooting the shit with our friends from Three Furies Press. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi. Hello. And of course, Jane, my co-host. Cheers. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking. I've got my little Hennessy house cup. <laughs> water this week. Who was it? Water last last time you did the show? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm drinking this time. <laughs> All right. That, that's part that's of the rule. Started. Right? I can make my drink. Yes. Oh. What are yeah, we drinking? I've got a fancy drink. Okay. So this. I don't know if you can see. Here, let me let me give you the. The screen. There's a teardrop on this glass. I don't Ooh, know if it shows. It's from the Writer's Tears Whiskey Collection, which was absolutely terrible whiskey. Um, <laughs> but I got the glasses. Um, and then this is called Heaven's Fire. And I made this drink um, to go with Julia's book, Heaven Fire, that comes yes. out on the 25th. So it's, this is a uh, brown sugar syrup uh, with cinnamon and crown royal vanilla, the one that comes in the brown dice bag. And then I'm gonna top it. It's so good. And the cinnamon gives it a little bit of a bite. It sounds really good. And I think I'm gonna have to go to North Carolina. Crude <laughs> bitters. Now, are these the same bitters that you were telling us about yeah. last month? Mm -hmm. This is the sycophant uh, flavor, which is orange and fig. And just Ooh. a little bit on top. <clears throat> and cheers. Cheers. And now she's ready for my book to come out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds delicious. How's it taste? Oh, it's so good. She's looking real relaxed now. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So tell us about this book that's coming out. Okay, so Heaven Fire is book two of the Angelborn series. So we start with Angelborn um, with Ginny Gracehurst, who thinks she's just a normal teen until she gets a bruise that won't fade and starts having strange dreams. So it turns out she's half angel, and there's a powerful half demon who wants to get his hands on her um, to kind of carry out his nefarious plans. So book two, we continue the adventure. She gets a new mission with her and Aiden, and they travel halfway across the world trying to stop Jacob from uh, making his nefarious plans come to fruition. <laughs> I love the name so, Aiden, by the way. That's like my favorite. So yay. <laughs> I'm already on team Aiden. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have teams. We have merch. So there's team Angelborn and Team Demon Kind. So you can be Team Angelborn. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now speaking of merch, I know a lot of people talk about doing merchandise for their books and for um, mm -hmm. you know, for companies. You know, like Go Indie Now just released their uh, merchandising shop. Tell me what kind Actually, of Actually on our shop. Did. That's right, through three, through three, I can talk, I really can. Through the Three Furies, what kind of merchandise works best and what's the best places you found to create your merch? Well, I mean, t-shirts are always great. T-shirts, something people really like to grab and wear. Um, but we also do a lot of mugs and even notebooks. If you're a writer, wouldn't you love to have a notebook with your favorite book cover on it? Oh, yeah. um, there's all sorts, like we use Printify and there's so much, many different options of what you can do. You can do like giant weekender totes, you can do jewelry even, you can even do like Christmas ornaments at Christmas time. So there's a ton of different options. Um, and the great thing about it is it's print on demand. So you don't have to put any money up front to have the merchandise made and then try to turn around and sell it to get your money back. So it's just printed whenever someone orders. Um, Mugs, yep. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the tote bag. I mean, who doesn't mm -hmm. need another tote bag? That's true. That's true. You can't have enough tote bags. I have well, a tote bag to hold all too. the other tote bags. Mm -hmm. I like the fuzzy blankets, though. <gasps> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good fuzzy blanket, yep. Yep. <laughs> I've done I'm, I'm all the way too. <laughs> Sherpa. <laughs> well, I've it started off like most. Yes. <laughs> 
most people do the, uh, the the easy swag. Like they do pens and pencils or they do chapstick. It's really cool to see a lot of people branching out now and creating some of these bigger items that while yes, can cost more to invest in. I think that print on demand style of doing them makes it kind of good for both the, the merchant as well as the person who's buying them. So I really like that idea. Yeah, I will pan down so you guys can see. This is my heaven fire shirt. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that color yeah. too. Thank you. I was just like, I have to have this. And, you know, people do ask questions about it too. So it's a great way to like, oh yeah, it's my book that I wrote. Like, haha, I'm so fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go for it. And t-shirts are the big thing. I love t-shirts that have mm -hmm. sayings on them, things that, that oh, like yeah. get you thinking. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, if you've got that and you've got your book cover with it and some kind of a, you know, one liner to go with that, you mm -hmm. can really get mm -hmm. people's interest. Now, oh, have yeah. any of you guys I've got done on the uh, For my book, I've, we've got a t-shirt up and it's this blonde woman in a fancy dress. And she says she could be anyone. She could be Stanzi, which is a line from the book. But it's just enough to kind of grab your attention if you're walking around with mm -hmm. it on there. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Jane, have you done it's any a merchandise great line. What? Have you done any merchandise for your stuff? Um, I, I have... I think I have I, with my jet fuel fiction logo. I have that out there. I haven't done anything else with the the covers because you know I don't know if they're licensed for it. <laughs> so, right. I was just gonna yeah, say if you're right. making merchandise, make sure that you have the right license for right. your images. Yeah. Otherwise, exactly. you can get in big trouble. Yeah, my Sherpa blanket I did myself through you know for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, actually, my son did it for me for Christmas, but I picked up oh, the wow. pictures. <laughs> so it's all of my, you know, fairy tale audiobook covers because they were nice and square. So oh, <laughs> <that's> sweet. <laughs> yes. See, I'd have a hard time getting rid of that stuff. Like, I can't sell it. This is mine. <laughs> I'm keeping it. <laughs> I, did that. I did that because I didn't get enough reviews for one. <laughs> Look who joined yeah, that. Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. No, okay. we, were busy. we saw you over on Rider and Perfect. How'd the show go? It was a lot of fun. There were some really awesome questions again. So, Josh um, runs a great show. I love sitting in and watching the, the questions come up, you know, participating in it. He gets a lot of activity, which is awesome. So it's a good show. Yeah, the, the last two weeks or so, there have been like some serious philosophical questions coming in from the uh, from the chat, from the live chat. And it's just been, whoa, this is kind of awesome. <laughs> well, good. And how are we doing tonight? Are we drinking anything tonight? I have a feeling that my internet connection is going to be too choppy. Oh, no. Oh, no. You, you went, okay, now it sounds fine. Yeah, it, it, you sound fine, Rebecca. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just go with it then. And if I can't hear a question, we'll just tell everyone I'm drunk. Well, yeah. We're just smile and nod. <laughs> Cheers. That's always, there, there you go, the bobblehead. <laughs> oh, I like oh, that. Snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> so we were just talking about merchandise. Have we done, have you done any merchandise, Rebecca? <laughs> Has she? <laughs> Just a few hundred. And what is the Just best? Just a few hundred in the last week, yeah. Or what is the most favorite merchandise? I shouldn't say best seller. What's the most favorite among people of your merchandise? Okay, I absolutely love the Dilma shirts I make. Um, but probably my favorite favorite, and it's so silly, I know, but is the um, stickers. Wait, you are giving me grief because I was going to be a little bit late and you're later than me. Hey, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been a long day. <laughs> Rage, brother. Oh, I would wow. like to I would like to, to say I did uh, manage to dodge another tornado today. So I'm pretty happy about that one, too. Yes. OK. Awesome. A real tornado. No, yeah. a fake one made by the Dust Devil. Well, I don't know here. if you're talking about like an, a tornado of comments on Facebook or something. No, no, know. just just tornadoes. We had scattered tornadoes today for our forecast. Nice. She's at so, one end of the system, and I'm at the other end of the same system. So we've had the same weather. 
Where Thankfully, we it like it went between us, and I was like, yeah. "Isa, are you seeing this?" <laughs> so how like, are you guys doing We're both not gonna die today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe's right. Joe's right. One of my favorite merch items is, in fact, the baby onesies. Because I have made some, I say, hilarious baby onesies. Oh like the Magic 8 Ball baby yes. onesie, the uh, Demon Kind baby onesie, and now I have to go in the now baby onesie. I need to see these. Where where can I find these? I need to see these. Yes. 3FuriesPress.com. Okay. Click on the catalog tab. Yeah, just go to catalog and you'll see everything. I think okay. my grandson needs some. Jason <laughs> turned the camera down there so he can get a pussy shot in. That's it. Oh, that's so you were holding we back on Writer and Perfect. I knew it. <laughs> I was sitting there, I was watching the show, and every my time they would and so kind of reference her eyes would go. <laughs> she was trying so hard uh, to do it. I'm yeah, waiting you know, to you see. Saw Josh. Josh caught on. He was egging me on. He's like, oh, you're going to work the kinks out of that one. <laughs> I'm waiting to see if Jason shows his butt again. What? You saw that? <laughs> yes. I saw that. I, I saw really that in his underclad glory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not wearing pants tonight either. That's, that's, why, <laughs> that's why I'm wearing the sweatshirt because it's cold in here. <laughs> After work, the pants come off. That's it. I am also not wearing pants. Me oh, either. Man. I am yep. wearing shorts. It's it was really hot here. Time. What's that? Spilling ink confessional. That's oh, I thought you said inspection oh, time. And I was like, inspection? No. Oh, that, that's even better. That one's even better. I think we need to go with that. <laughs> oh. I'm going to need a few more drinks first. I don't know so, if it's hot in here or not. So I know I'm that I'm... <laughs> So it's just like okay. I I get that too. I'm getting ready to go through the the change as well. So. Jason, <laughs> <laughs> so, soon, soon you're gonna start. You're gonna start growing like hair on your lip too. Yeah. Jason, <laughs> I can't. It doesn't grow up there right. It work. Yeah, after the, after he's through the change, it'll it will. Come in. Yeah. <laughs> so. And for for serious, I I actually I, I know I'm I'm kind of behind on this one because you've been doing interviews with all sorts of people, but can you guys give us the three theories rundown again so that I know about it, so I know more about it? Look at Jason on track today. We need well, to I'm bring you on track. more often. No, no I'm not on track. I'm, I'm just genuinely interested. Well, I already told I you the important want to take part. That? Wait, wait. But you were both talking at the same time. I couldn't wait. I heard I already Julia told you say, the important part. I'm the one with the uh, demon wings in the middle. <clears throat> well, no, that's not it's really what all you, you need me. to know. You said your your code name was Cherub, and that's all I needed to know. No, you said my code name was Cherub, <laughs> and that's all I needed to know. Because if she tells you her code name, she'll have to kill you. <laughs> so, so, but you can call her Cherub. It's fine. <laughs> So tell me about three theories. Who's who's I'm got the this? one with the pocket square, by the, by the way, and the logo. The pocket um, square. What? What? Yeah. Where? On and the, the logo. logo. On the logo. Oh, none of, and none of us have our logo. Oh. Well, if you look at the logo. Well, yeah. <laughs> you you guys should have the logo hanging up. Like, look behind me there. I know we should. Look at that. It's, spill, it's spilling ink right there. Yeah, well, look, yeah, the order hasn't it. shipped yet. Like it's <laughs> Isa's logo is is the frickin' martini glass. Hey, you rock That's that shit, girl. Right there. <laughs> no complaints on that one. <laughs> hey, Katie. You know what? Give me one second. I will print out the logo and hang it up behind me. Hey, hey Katie. <laughs> yep. Katie. Katie yep. Salidas. Yep. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Did you want me We're to answer good. your question, Jason? Good. Yeah. Wait, wait. Who's talking now? That's me. Rebecca, what's that map behind you? <laughs> dots? It's a map. Yeah. For God's sake, um, someone tell are, me where you are. It's where, where the, the bodies, bodies are. are. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, my series map dot, maps doll goes across the entire United States, and okay. that is where the books have hit so far. Okay. So you started in Connecticut, or is that Long Island? I actually started in New Jersey. Oh, okay. So it really is where the bodies are. Yes. 
There's yes. a lot of bodies out there. <laughs> there are a lot of bodies. And, and nobody cares. Like, they are um in book four, they are just now getting a tally of the of the kills from book one. Wow. There are a lot of bodies. Oh, I like I, I still want to take it away though. <laughs> okay. Well, the three of us have known each other for a year or two, give or take. Um and we find that we work really, really oh, well nice. together. So when the opportunity came up, we were like, yeah, let's start our own publishing company. And we kind of worked out what we wanted to do, the areas that we wanted to focus on, how we wanted to divide up the roles in the company. I'm the CEO and finance officer. Rebecca is the KU one. She's our operations manager. And Julia is uh, president and head editor. So right now we're focusing on building a really strong base. We're republishing some previously published works. We're putting out some new uh, works from, from us and we're working on merchandise. We're branching out into that, but we're kind of taking it slow to make sure we know what's what. Well, welcome. Now, where did the oh, name well. Furies come from? We really wanted something um, mythological because that's important. Both Julia and Rebecca write about that, and I'm a big personal fan. So we just kind of started brainstorming and spitballing and found that one. Rebecca found these great wings, and there's like there are three furies in a Charlie's Angel pose, and it's just freaking awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. I think she accidentally clicked out for a second. So as soon as she gets back, we'll put her back in. I think she was trying to hold up the logo. Yeah. <laughs> she flipped out. Yeah. But yeah, the logo is awesome. I, I did get that Charlie's Angel vibe when I saw it. And I just, I thought it was brilliant. You guys came up with a, a really brilliant name. I can see how the marketing will work for that. And obviously you guys got a bunch of stuff in the works already. So you're just starting off with a bang. Well, yeah, our publishing schedules. To the end of the year already. Yeah. yeah, we're full through December. My goodness, so, and we're we're only in April, so that's a lot yeah. of stuff you have planned. <laughs> so How many you, authors do you have under your um under your umbrella so far? For for what is M also M is also an author, right? But she hasn't yes. submitted. Yep. She so, is working on yeah, she's still working on her story. So we have four right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we got a good question right here from Elizabeth asking, how many titles will you guys publish this year? Oh, crap. I should have had the answer to that. <laughs> We've got uh, almost every month is two a month. <laughs> okay. With the Wait, four authors? Wow. That's, that's pretty Most cool. of it is Rebecca. She has an entire mm -hmm. slut series mm -hmm. that, that we're republishing. Okay, that's cool. Let me see. Yeah, she's got some steamy ones coming out. I get to edit them. <laughs> yeah, there's one really coming cool. out. Wait, what's the one came out? One just came out. Yeah. Melissa's <laughs> Men. Yeah, it just came out yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's so fun for me to edit them when I'm sitting next to a family member and I'm just like, <laughs> don't look at my screen. <clears throat> don't look at my screen. And I'm like, poker face, do not react. There's so much heat going on in here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really getting exciting. Don't look at me. <laughs> we have 25 titles coming out this year. That's awesome. I did that one time. I was flying home um, from a wedding with mm -hmm. my cousin. Now my cousin is an adult now, but I grew up with her being a little kid. And so I was reading um, on my Kindle as we're flying home and it got to a really steamy part of the book. And I'm like, <clears throat> she's an adult now and I shouldn't have to worry about it. But I was kind of like angling my screen away. Yes. Yes. It's like, oh my gosh, don't look at what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's funny because yeah, whenever I, I went on vacation, I would find a romance mo novel with the trashiest cover and sit there by the pool and watch the kids and read it. Ooh, and there's like, their logo, guys. Yep, there it is. That is gorgeous. I just love that. So the one in the middle is Rebecca. And then the one with the pocket square. Yeah, I've been told square, that one's, yeah. one's me. And the pocket square 
Um, that one's Isa. That one is me, and the other one is Julia. Awesome. That's so cool. <clears throat> I love it. And that would go great on a t-shirt. <laughs> yep. I am ordering a t-shirt yeah, and a giant weekender bag as soon as I get paid. I'm so excited. Right. So Elizabeth has a great question. And funny enough, Elizabeth, I was about to ask <laughs> that. Uh, so good, good timing there. So yeah, what, uh, what type of genres do you guys want to be involved with? Gals, um, not guys. We are going to be publishing a wide variety of the girls. Um, I saw, <laughs> or Rebecca was talking about this earlier on writer and perfect, <laughs> but the only books we're kind of shying away from for now are books that we don't have strong resources to bring to. So like, for example, we have great graphic designers, but they're not really ready to do hardcore sci-fi covers, for example. So we wouldn't want to take on a sci hardcore sci-fi um, author unless they had their own cover. Um, but it's just like, we're, we're pretty much open. Okay. So, um, you know, all kinds of genres. Do, would you mind we're if We're open I... to a lot of things, let's just say. <laughs> We we know we know you are Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about you while you disappeared. <laughs> we were talking about your smile. Oh, I'll watch it later. <laughs> um, do you? You're talking no, about my what? Smut. <laughs> do you ladies mind if I ask you a uh, kind of a, a real business question, or would you rather not have that kind of question? Why don't you ask and we'll see? Well, what I'm, I'm not giving you an answer before I hear the question. Right. <laughs> I enough. know better. Fair enough. So ask the I, question. We'll find out how sober we are. Well, <laughs> it's it's something I've been curious about. So, as as a small press, where do you find the money to pay all of your contractors that are doing the work for you when the only income you're getting is royalties on a book that may not be published for months or, or uh, say, what a Joe Wait? Oh, Brady Bunch. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so how do you, how do you pay all your contractors when, when, when your fee is basically the, the royalties that come in or do the contractors work off of those royalties as well? Yeah, we're on a hybrid model. So our contractors, which includes us, uh, get paid through royalties for the work that they do. So it's going to take a little while to build up that steam, uh, but I don't think it'll be long. Not with you know so many books going no. off the shelves right now. And is it is it difficult to find people that will will work like that? You know, because it seems like a lot of people in this industry really you know they just want to be paid up front for everything. Or are these people that that you've worked with before and know? the value of what you guys are doing and, and want to be on board with it? Or how do you? Oh, yeah, we were, we were really lucky um, that we have worked in this industry for a while. And so we've met some really great people. And when we approached um, a couple of awesome people um, who are great at their jobs, graphics, editing, all that stuff, when we were like, hey, you know, we're starting our own press, our own publishing house, they were like, let us follow you. We'd love to help. And um, we wanted to keep things really fair. Um, so that's why we kind of devised this royalty split and share among everyone so that, you know, you're, you're doing a work, you're, you know, you're doing graphics, you're doing the cover, you're going to get paid this much for each book that sells. That somewhat sounds like our model at Novel Concept Pub Publishing mm -hmm. too. So, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, interesting. So, okay, cool. Thank and you. plus, That's it's really important for the three of us to also be writers. So we're scheduling things and planning our work schedules around the fact that we also want to write books. So we're expecting that the people who work for us also work as writers or work in other jobs. And, you know, things are going to be juggled. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why we don't want to try and do too much, especially we want to keep it so that everybody's got flexible time and is comfortable with the amount of work they're doing and the amount of pay they're going to get. Are you picky on your on your submissions and what you accept because of that? Because you're a writer too, or do you find 
that you're going to take a chance if the story is well, but they need a lot of work on the arc or the grammar or things like that. If you've got a really strong voice and a good story to tell, we can help you with the mechanics of it. Mm -hmm. That's what we really want. We want a really strong voice and a great story. Right. Yeah, we're not worried about trends on the market or anything like that. If it's a good story, like we believe in it. Yeah, will you guys be doing um, anthologies at all where you uh, kind of bring out new authors with smaller stories before taking a chance on them with bigger novels? Or will you just put your call for submissions out and start bringing people in as you're ready for them? At this time, we're really not looking to do anthologies, although um, my book that's coming out in November isn't really an anthology. It's a collection of short stories, but that's like as close as we're going to get to an anthology for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> okay. I've seen yeah. publishers do that, where they start out small, they test the waters with the, the shorter mm -hmm. stories to see if they like the author, if they can work with the author, and then they open it up for, for bigger submissions. And that's that's a really great way to find new people. However, the, the mechanics and the work of putting together an anthology and tracking all those authors and their submissions and the contracts and the royalties, is nightmare. It's, it's a lot. I, I can imagine. <laughs> I can totally imagine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, let's say you only get 50 submissions, that's 50 stories to read through, and then you accept 30, and then you have to edit 30 stories, you have to do quote graphics for 30 stories, and then you have to do all the normal stuff that goes into making a book. Mm -hmm. I would say we're not like opposed, like, we're not saying we'll never do it, but it's not a priority right now. We want to build a strong base and then expand. Sounds good. Yeah, and you know, there's always going to be those authors in an anthology who won't do any marketing. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just kind of dead weight right there on it. So now, what are the uh, marketing expectations for authors that you publish? Well, um, for each author, when their book comes out, we'll do um, a blog tour, except for the smut. Those don't do well on blog tours. Uh, <laughs> so Julia's blog tour is going on right now. Mine starts next week. Um, and we set up like eight to 10 stops on the blog tour and everybody does like an interview or a guest post or whatever, you know how blog tours work. Um, and every single stop gets shared all over social media on every channel that we have access to. And we continue to do that. We've got cover reveals and uh, tidbits and, and things on our uh, shop website. We've got a blog there that we can talk about things coming up to. And we also like prepare a launch schedule, like a social media buildup for the authors to use to kind of start promoting their books two, three months before the release and get hype and attention to it. But I mean, it's obviously the author's got to do that part. Like we'll help you, we'll guide you on how to do this, but ultimately you're the one who has to post on your Facebook. I know, and I've been really lax this week. I've got a cover reveal that I, I should be sharing. I've got all these other things that I should be doing, but I'm too busy doing the day job. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's, that's the author life right there. Like, I'd right. love to get to this stuff, but everything else in life is getting I know. <laughs> so what day job do you do it? Uh, this. Oh, OK. Sure. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> I, I, I have a, yeah, this is, this is what I do. I have a Other good job, that, but a real uh, 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 office job. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You wear that's too many hats, Jane. That's the life out of me. <laughs> but I come home and kill people on the page. Been there, done yeah. that. Brace but the kids. The fun yeah. part, though, killing people on the page, I could do that. Well, you know I do it well. <laughs> oh, my God. When she warns me, when I'm beta reading her book, she's like, yeah, so it gets a little dark. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I get to the, the part she referred to. And literally every time I'm like, really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you, I, I'm curious, do you find it hard to kill your characters? Or do you like cackle maniacally? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> no, I, um, it depends. If the story calls for it, and, and sometimes I've been surprised that the story calls for it. 
And I've actually burst out crying because I didn't realize it was coming and it came and then happened and I read it and I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> but, you know, other times I'm like, that's the only logical thing to get mm -hmm. through it. I mean, you know, I, I killed somebody who I dearly loved in, in, oh, in, yeah. in, in one of the more recent books. Katie's face says it all. <laughs> And, and it was tough. She needed a drink, yeah. just remembering it. Yes. I can't believe it. <laughs> and, he, you know, he's been with me since since he was born in the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I, I weave my series together. So, you know, you always end up having somebody from before or, or one of the other series that I've written in the new one. But, yeah, it's it depends. You know, sometimes it's necessary and I, you know, and I'm sad, but sometimes I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I find people fall into two camps, like the ones who cry while they're writing it and the ones who like really enjoy torturing their readers. Um, for myself, I, I get really upset when I figure out they have to die, but I'm not too emotional when I actually write the death. Well, like yeah. when I was like when these two characters in particular, I was just like, no, I no, I love them. I can't kill them off, but I had to. And so I was like really torn up about it emotionally when I figured out that I had to. Mm -hmm. But when it came to actually writing the scene, I was like very calm about it. Well, if I know the story arc of a series, I pretty much mm -hmm. know, you know, OK, if it goes this direction, this will happen. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I set up things. And yeah, <laughs> it is tough. Um, I was but, talking to Julia about a character earlier today um, from <laughs> an upcoming book. Um, we were talking about his name, but this character, I there was a scene where he gets shot and goes out a window and it just upset me so much <laughs> that I had to go back and rewrite. He still gets shot and goes out the window, but he doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't kill him. I just couldn't. I couldn't lose James. I just love James so much. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Afraid for James so to hard. Die. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have Jane over here telling me in the last book who to kill. <laughs> like, See, she's one of those cackles maniacally while she's typing <laughs> their demise. <laughs> I'm like, no, oh, there's another character. She's like, but he has to die. I'm like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Like, you shied away from it. I know. I saved him. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I used to, in my first series, I had fun killing people. And I had one book where there is a very important death. And I have readers to this day who are mad at me for that one. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of backed off a little on who I kill. I mean, evil people have no problem killing. Yeah. But when it comes mm -hmm. to those main characters, those beloved characters, I'm like, oh, I don't want my readers to get mad at me. <laughs> I know there's one character that I do really, really love. And I know he's going to die. It's planned into the arc of the series. <clears throat> A book that starts out with him dead is called View from the Grave. I mean, yeah, he's dead. There's no writing around this one. <laughs> It's yeah. just gonna kill me to write that one. Jason, mm -hmm. how about you? You know, I uh I genuinely enjoy killing off characters. <laughs> I, I really do. But you know, my favorite is when I'm crying while I do it because then okay. I feel like, okay, I'm gonna get this reaction from the reader. And that just makes mm -hmm. me so happy. Like, yes, because I'll I'll know right at the beginning, okay, I'm I'm gonna kill this fucker. I, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> And then it's I'll always do my better best. when they're crying. <laughs> I'll do my best to make me love that character and make the readers love yeah. the character so that at the right moment, <laughs> yes. Ooh, we got another Ooh. good question in here. Wow. Yeah, that was a really good one. Elizabeth, you've got great questions tonight. Um, yeah, uh, well, Elizabeth, all, all of the above. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, important. Marketing is, is what makes or breaks the book. I mean, you can have the most beautiful... Uh, cover, you have the most well edited book, but if no one knows it's there. Yep, we've got marketing checklists. So, you know, that's like one of the first things the author sees once they're accepted. Um, I will, as or Julia, one of us will walk them through what they need to do, how to run a blog tour, how to do what they do. 
one on one. Um, at this point, we're not really big enough to need videos or tutorials. Um, but we certainly have a list of resources that we can point authors to. So yeah, we've got a getting started document for authors. So say this sure, is what you need to do, that. set up a book sprout, do this, um, explaining the launch strategy, um, all that stuff. Do you guys see this? It's, a, it's an Arctic fox that was in the, the, vets, the vet clinic today. Wow. Oh, so cute. So cool. He was awesome. He, he didn't, <laughs> He did not really want me to um, actually pick him up for the picture. After that picture, he was like over my head and down my back. But mm -hmm. uh, the picture is what counts. They got it at the right. Picture is what, right? what counts. Also, I'm, <laughs> I'm having some kind of like weird lag off. issue here. It's really bizarre. Like the only person I can see moving and and really hear that's not a robot is Jason. Like everyone else's picture is frozen. <laughs> It's the ghost of Rebecca. Wait, is it Jonesy or Jonasy? Jonesy. Okay, I thought so. And then I heard somebody say Jonasy, and I was like, have I been yeah, fucking Ed, that name Ed, up? Ed says it Jonasy. Uh, that, was, that was somebody else who's making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> like Jonesy, you know, when you're when you're jonesing for something real good. That's Jones, me. <laughs> jonesing for Rebecca. For smut. Mm -hmm. It yes. always goes back to yeah. innuendo, doesn't it? Always. Yep. So I'm actually we going know to how that be... Goes. Later this year, I'm actually going to be submitting something to the the Three Furies. I uh, got a hold of the secret submission email address, so I'm going to be submitting a book of short stories that I have been waiting to publish for like two freaking years. But uh, so That's hopefully, exciting. hopefully, so ladies will will like the content and and want to to be. Oh, we already read it. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. How do you guys read? Rebecca has freaking fast. What Who are you, you talking think, to, Rebecca? dude? Uh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was yeah. really good. No, yeah, I really want to understand fast readers. So I would like to move forward with that. Okay. As always, it's, give me more. Me, you have give to me play. more. Yeah, I will give you more. I will. Also, yeah. you want I... more as often as possible. You want the, <laughs> the midnight hour. I haven't read the submission yet, but I did read Whisper of the Shadows and reviewed it on Joe's show. Oh, you did? That was you. Yeah, that was That's me. That's how I know you. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. It. It was Julia. I was trying not to be a dick because I, I was just like, man, I, I really I know this woman, but I have no idea how I know this woman. Oh my gosh. I'm so bad with names and faces, so I'm like, how do I know you? All the time. Like people start talking to me, how do I know you? <laughs> if, see, if you had a pet of some sort in your hands, I would be like, Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, you know, that's Paco's mom, or oh yeah, that's Chinchilla's mom. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> How's your baby squirrel? And we're both from Michigan. Pull up a picture of me, Julia. Then he'll remember. Are you in? You're in Michigan too. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts in Michigan are you? Oh, I'm Julia, an hour do, from Detroit. Do the hand thing Ooh. again. <laughs> oh, yep. that's, I'm asking my husband. That's, yeah, that's I'm 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 right here. You're yeah. You're about four hours away from me. Yeah, I don't. You tuck your thumb it. in when you do it. No, no, it has out. to go out. The mitten. Yeah. Well, it's not all the way out. It's kind. Of, it's semi out. It's it's not. Where's my camera? You're all like tucked in. <laughs> that, that's the baby squirrel. Oh. oh my. Her name is Edie. She's about six and a half weeks old, and you know, it's. I know you. Some of you have probably seen me post about it on Facebook, but um, so somebody dropped it off at the at the vet's office when, uh, and my wife happened to happened to be there, and so she was like, "Zook!" and grabbed it because. <laughs> That's that's not something the the vet's office won't just take care of a wild animal. We mm -hmm. you know if, if it's dying, we'll they euthanize it or send it to wild wildlife rehab. But this this squirrel was almost dead. I mean, it was I, I thought maybe a couple of hours left. So I stuck it in the incubator. We, you know, we gave it some uh, some glucose and and warmed it up. And within twenty four hours, my, my wife had had gotten it crawling around and now it's just like everywhere. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. I, and it makes my heart so happy that this silly little squirrel is doing so well, because I was like, you know, you should have been dead. <laughs> it should have been over for this one, but yeah, yeah. so it, it's cool. It's, it's a fun little experience. 
And not everywhere has black squirrels. Yeah, I hear once you raise a baby squirrel, they don't ever really leave you. So you kind of have a pet for the rest of its life now. Well, you know, it's it's for the rest of his life, you know. Yes, yes, Um, and and that's and that's absolutely true. And it's part of the reason um, that next week the squirrel is actually going to um, a wildlife rehab lady. Um, that that has a, a larger group of baby squirrels that she's going to be releasing at once because apparently they survive a little bit better if you release them as a group. So that's awesome. And we, yeah, and and we don't want it to live in our backyard because we have a, a dachshund that is a serious hunter. And if as, the squirrel is are. only with us and yeah. comes down to see us, she'll get it. Chew toy. Yeah, yeah. So oh, we don't we don't want that. <laughs> no. No. Oh. All right, well, ladies, I promised my wife I was only going to be a few minutes, so I've got to, I've got to go. It, it's been, a, it was a long work day, so I, I promised her a, a special time. Uh, so I've as usual, go. the guy has to bow we're out. Gonna, tomorrow, we're then. gonna, we're gonna read some Rebecca Jonasy books and cuddle. <laughs> You'll do more than cuddle if do you, you need hot coffee. Books. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. Enjoy your drinks. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Cheers. He was surprisingly on point this time. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Jason's gone. Hey. I can hear you guys again so, somewhat. <laughs> good. That's good. All right. So where did we leave off, guys? Squirrel. Um, <laughs> squirrel. squirrel. <laughs> yeah, we all got distracted by the random right? squirrel. He was the squirrel to get together. <laughs> we were talking about killing characters off. <laughs> And marketing. And marketing. Oh, and marketing, yes. yeah. Marketing. Well, there's a lot of resources online that you can definitely point people to for marketing. Mm-hmm. And then as you guys develop your own thing, you can make your own, obviously. But you've been in the business for a while, so you know this stuff already. So you've oh, probably oh, got yeah. like a, sta- a staple of things that you can just easily say, okay, here you go. I have a stack of PDFs this high. Yep. Yeah, my, Isa is our marketing queen. Um, <laughs> And I, in the beginning, I really needed a lot of hand holding when it comes to marketing. When I was first starting out and getting published and even still just writing my books, I was just like, no clue how any of this works. Um, and I learned so much from ISA. So we really want to like pass that forward and really help guide our authors. So they're not just being thrown into the ocean and flailing around like, and you like I felt knew like I was, yeah, more than some of the other authors I've worked with. <laughs> well, even even long term authors still have to learn new stuff all the time because yep. marketing Absolutely. is ever changing. And once one thing works, everybody goes towards it. It becomes flooded. It no longer works the same way it used to. So now you have to try something new. So it, it's mm-hmm. an ever evolving thing. I'd like to be at the cutting edge at some point. <laughs> Someday, I'm not. Right. <laughs> and I'm always, you know, a lag behind. <laughs> it's cheaper if you lag behind. I know. I'd like to be the trailblazer. That's when you get jewelry on clearance, you lag behind. Yeah, yeah. that is good. That, that is always good. <laughs> you hide that Prada handbag you want in the boy's shoe department until it goes on sale. <laughs> She's not speaking from experience. No, really, but. not at all. <laughs> not like I worked for Macy's for three years. <laughs> yes, we all learn new things every day. Yes, <laughs> you yes. have to. You have to because nothing works the same. And and even something that does work one for one author, it doesn't work the same for another author. Even in the same genres, it's the it's same not like with a magic parenting. Thing. Same thing's well, true with what. Parenting, what works for one kid is not going to work for any of the others. Right. Well, I was going to say the same thing works for writing. Um, Because even when I was writing, so I wrote a trilogy and I'm working on the next series. But like for each book, I had to change my writing process for each book to get it to work. And my writing process has changed so much from like, I used to be a, a pantser and I never knew what was going to happen in the next sentence, let alone the end, but I never finished anything. So when I got super serious about publishing and wanting to be an author and not just a writer, you know, um, I completely revamped my writing style. And I find that I like do that for every book almost still. 
so it's just like you learn new things, you have to keep adapting and changing. What works for one book didn't work for my second book, you know? Yeah, and and I've been writing um, the lighthearted crime fiction for my first book, A Kiss for Luck, but I'm about to switch gears and go into sort of a mercenary kind of thing and um, a soldier military adventure thriller. Yes, words, words in order. Um, so yeah, I'm really gonna have to switch gears. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. It's a writing style. <laughs> It's true, though. You do evolve as you write, and especially for the genre that you write in. Um, I know for me, I used to write the whole thing, you know, that first draft, that skeleton draft, and then start from the beginning and start weaving in more flesh on the bones. And my writing styles changed to the point where I want to put these books out faster and I want to get my readers involved a lot sooner. So I write in like almost 10,000 word chunks overlapping each other. And mm -hmm. as I finish one 10,000 word chunk and it's ready to be looked at, I'll give it to somebody and I'll work on the next one and the next one. And I kind of, you know, almost a step ladder each section so that I can get my readers involved. I can get their feedback. I can easily revamp those sections while continuing to move forward, which is something I never used to do before. I used to always make sure that the draft was 100 percent readable before I let anyone see it. I think that's, that's really, really funny, Katie. Yeah. I actually do just the opposite now. I started out the way that you're doing it now, and now I'm doing it the way you started out. That's right. So. Everybody does their own thing. It's what works for you. I yeah. know, Jane, you do kind of that overlapping chapter, revise and then rewrite, revise and then rewrite. Yeah, I, I, I yes. <laughs> I, I just get the damn thing done. <laughs> so, I used to write chronologically. Um, you know, and, and I used to, you know, either write an ending or a beginning and not know anything else, sort of like you, Julia. Um, and then I made my son, when when we wrote his trilogy, do a, a outline that we need to, needed to follow. That was new, plus the book was in first person, so that was new for me, because I used mm -hmm, to write mm -hmm. third. Now, now I'm more comfortable in first than I was than I am in third, so Katie. Well, I tell everyone, <laughs> try something new because you never know what's going to work better for you. People get into this mindset of this is my process. This is the only way it works. But like, um, you know, like I said, I was a pantser and then I was like thinking, oh, my God, outlining. You have those like flashbacks to high school yeah. with like <laughs> Roman numerals and bullet points and everything's just fitting into slots. And it's like just the most tedious thing you have ever had to do in your entire life. It's still um, and <laughs> well, but I started researching different outlines. There's like an outline for every style yeah. of writing. There's like, you just write the blurb and go from there. There's chapter outlines, there's scene lists. There's like, there's so Practical many different ones. things you can yeah. try. We do scene lists, Katie. <laughs> To-do lists. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Points after the chapters, like, you know, Somebody dies. This happens. Somebody dies. Buy groceries. Right. Yeah. In, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. But I mean, like, you can find something that works for you. Like, don't be afraid to try something new. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I I was um, when I was in Backspace Org. It was a writing group many years ago. They used to have writing prompts, and one of it was write out of your um, genre in a tense that you've never done. And at that time, <laughs> I wrote first person present tense, which was like, for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> when you're used to writing third person past tense, writing first person present tense was just like, so grating on your nerves. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I wrote a I took thing. Julia's writing class and she made me do that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but, and that's where I found, okay, first person isn't that bad. You know, I'm like, okay, if it's done well, 
<laughs> See, what I started with first person and then I moved to third and I'm comfortable with third. So that's yeah. why we're having right. fun with that book. <laughs> well, I, I, I changed my stuff to third, if you've noticed. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I can do this. I can go back to that. But, you know, then I have to step out and say, okay, it's not just what's in my head either. And we had, we had not talked about it either. So it was no. just like, oh, let's just write. And then you're writing one, I'm writing the other. It's like, oh, crap. Okay. So I adjusted. <laughs> now, That's nice. Yeah. Two questions before we get too off topic. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is coming in with some great questions today. She's talking about you guys, your company. How edited should the manuscript be before you send it in? I like to think that it should be as good as you can get it. That doesn't mean it has to be perfect because plot holes and things like that can be fixed, but do, do some of the work yourself. Make sure there's like no typos in there or anything like that, because that's just horrible. As good as you can get it and then submit it. Is yeah, definitely. As good as you can get it without hiring a professional. Yeah. Right, definitely do not yeah. send a first draft. Um, you never to anyone. You never want to send a first draft. You want to do a little bit of self editing that you can do stuff like like I know my weaknesses. I know I need to flesh out setting and descriptions. I know I need to like work on not having just walls of dialogue, and I need to intersperse it with some stuff. So like that's the kind of stuff we suggest you do. Like know your weaknesses, know what you need to work on. Try to adjust and fix some of that, and fill in or cut out unnecessary bits and then send it then send it in okay and then as a follow-up and as for the uh, the query letters um, you do not need to send a query letter but when you send a submission in um, do give us a little you know this is the genre it's in this is what it's about and you know, it's a, a very short it doesn't have to be like a super tight synopsis or anything Ooh, she's got all the good questions um, right now not yet. I mean, mine's what ninety five thousand words. Yeah, close yeah, to hundred. We're, we're really running the the, the gamut um, in word count. Honestly, I don't want to do anything less than twenty five thousand words. Mm -hmm. um, but we can always discuss it. We don't have a hard limit on that. Um, there are there are different things we can do with different types of books and different lengths. So mm -hmm. for sure, you know, put all that info in there. Um, if you would like to, you know, add in how many words it is at the beginning too, that's in your sub submission email, that is also very helpful. Yes, and to submit, send it to threefuriespress at gmail.com with submission in the subject line. And do remember, we are booked until February. So you, mm -hmm. you will not publish this year. From an editing standpoint, have you ever requested that somebody change a, a, a major plot point in their book because it didn't really work? Oh, that's a good question. Um, or an ending? <laughs> that's tough. I had I, I had to do that twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And it didn't work. I had a huge plot hole right in yeah. chapter 20 that they had to help me fix. See, plot holes can be filled, but endings, that's, oh. Well, that's, but that's endings tough. are so important. Like, you have to hit, like, that sweet spot of giving enough resolution, but if it's a series, like, keeping threads going and keeping them wanting to read the next one. Not that you should end on a cliffhanger, but, it, I mean, if we try to like well i i'll speak for myself as an editor i i mean i'm not going to go in with this like fixed mindset that a story has to go a certain way especially because it's not my story to tell and i know that you know different authors have different visions for their story but if there's something that's just like really incongruous or not fitting in or doesn't you know give that satisfying resolution um then that's a discussion that you have to have with them saying this is my, you know, this is my experience as an editor coming to you saying, if you change this aspect or if you focus on this character instead, I oh, yeah. think you would have a much stronger ending yeah. or for your book. Yeah. If you leave it this way, you're going to alienate your audience. 
Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. I've actually had a book submitted to me that, like, the entire story is about one character all the way to the end, except the ending doesn't end with the main character. And it's like, wait, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, can't, you can't do that. You can't that do that. Publishing adage, uh, the first chapter sells this book, but the last chapter sells the next one. So yeah. it's not. And as I really found out, the last it. chapter, the last yeah. chapter also sells the review. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. A lot of reviews will point. change a hundred percent at that ending. So if you if you mess up that ending, you can really are we allowed to cuss on this show? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the authors. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can really you can really fuck yourself up mm -hmm. by by giving a poor ending. Um, and you will you'll I mean you're not just going to mess up that one book, you're going to fuck over yourself as an author. Right. I'm not going to read anything about you again. Let me, let me get that for you, Isa. <laughs> and, and, and people, we all know this, that the internet with its anonymity, the people who do reviews because of that anonymity are that much more yes. able to call you out on every single mistake without worrying about your feelings, um, without right. worrying mm -hmm. the words that they choose to use. And so if you really don't stick Without worrying anonymity, about reality or what you actually wrote? They're yeah. going to rip you a new one and it's going to be all over any review channel that they can post on. So you really do have to make sure that you are servicing your reader with the way that you write the story, with making sure you filled all the plot holes, with making sure that you have stuck that landing so that if it is a series, yes, they are ready to move on to the next one. Or if it's the end of a series or a standalone, that it ends satisfyingly enough. Right. And I will say this since, I, you know, as head editor, like I'm not going to be a dictator in the relationship. I know with a lot of like traditional or big houses, um, like it's kind of like do it my way or you don't get published. So, you know, I try to have a healthy approach to it on both sides. Like this is something we can discuss. This is something we can work through together. Ultimately, if you are, you know, just refusing to budge on anything like choose the hill you want to die on like is this the hill you really want to die on that you're not going to change anything in your story your story is perfect because then why are you getting it edited why you know why don't you just self-publish it because it's golden the way it is you know so there's that balance of like producing an, an awesome story because we're here just to make your story the best it can be and get it out to the world. Um, so, you know, I don't try to put myself into like an authority, you have to listen to what I'm saying, but at the same time, like we gotta work together. Yeah, and, and, if, and, if, and if, having, if, having if, a dialogue. Tater, then Rebecca or I will be the dick tater. Yeah, <laughs> the dialogue between you and your author is very important. Mm -hmm. So having that yeah. conversation, picking up the phone and actually talking them through and understanding why from their point of view it's like this mm -hmm. and trying to, you know, if, if yeah. you really feel strongly that it's going to hurt the story or something's not going right, that conversation can can work both ways. And yeah, and I will know, I will you know, always have that conversation. Yeah, you, you know, that, that is straight up, you know, out. if you want me to call you and talk to you on the phone to do it. I'll yeah. do that too. Yeah. But you know, there are some things I know will not fly. They just, mm -hmm. they just won't. Right. And right. Um, I had, I had to reject this one because the, the author just would not work with me. I'm like, no, you, okay. I understand you do not see that this is a giant plot hole, but this is a giant plot hole. This yeah. book is not a solid book. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, he was, he was not willing to budge. Yeah, those, those and I was like, those okay, um, well, <laughs> good luck. Have, to you. have yeah, good good luck. Yeah, and if I it, it, your publishing house, then you have the right of refusal. And if they are not willing to meet the terms mm -hmm. that you've set out, and you've obviously discussed it with them, then maybe another publishing house is a better fit for them. Well, we need to have like a standard of quality that we want to maintain for our readers, you know, because who's going to want to buy our books if we're just throwing anything out there, you know, and we're all really passionate about this and we really care about what, you know, the products we're producing. Um, but it's like a fine line, like, you know, it's the author's story at the end of the day. But at the same time, like as editors, as publishers, as marketers, we have experience and expertise that the average author doesn't. So it's like, 
you should consider listening to what we have to say because we're saying it for a reason. So um, for the book, my book that's coming out in May, I had a lot of these kind of back and forth mm -hmm. conversations with both Julia and Rebecca. There was hills, there were hills that I was willing to die on and other ones I'm like, okay, nope, you're right. Let's go this. But it was completely, I would express my point of view and they would express their point of view. And like, they would say, oh, well, these rules apply. I'm like, okay, this rule I'm willing to break and this one I'm not. But it was a continual dialogue mm -hmm. And where I felt that my voice was going to be changed, that was the line I drew. And mm -hmm. they were like, well, okay, these commas, this is a line Julia's going to draw. And I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Put more commas. I'm a, I'm a, we, 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 do have, we, we do have more than a few hard and fast rules. Like there are no double spaces at the end of sentences. Oh, I dear don't God. care. People still do that. People still do that. I don't know. Like it's on a typewriter anymore. And we use the Oxford comma. We don't yeah. care. Or do you use the Shatner comma? No. no. <laughs> um, sometimes you. when I really, yeah. really, There's really no. want to make Julia angry, I will in fact use the Shatner comma. <laughs> My editor hates me for that. <laughs> and I, I have in fact done that to her before. Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also the walk-in comma too. Oh yeah, <laughs> I never, I never got that one. Not though. I never, I never quite got that one. <laughs> it's even slower so. than the Shatner comma. Yes. Oh, oh Isa, yeah. why don't you talk a little bit about your book coming out? All right, I have a book coming out. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> she brought it up, so. Um, a kiss for luck comes out May fourth. It's uh, lighthearted crime fiction. Uh, I. Temporary secretary gets uh, an inheritance that allows her to make the trip of a lifetime. So she goes to Italy and a down on his luck con man, Jules Brand, is looking for his next big mark. And together they run into trouble with um, one of his former marks. So they have a mad crime spree across the Italy and the, and the uh, river. <coughs> And I probably should have, you know, read the blurb, but I can never remember what it now, is. When does this come out? May 4th. <laughs> oh, wow. So very soon. Yeah. And the pre-order is very soon. now only 99 cents for the pre-order. Get it now. Now, will you be Kindle Unlimited? Will you be wide? Or will you be a little bit of both touching on each side? Rebecca? <laughs> wide. <laughs> we, we, I, I like to take a slide here. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I We've was asked because a lot of authors on for do, test the waters with Kindle Unlimited for the 90 days. And then I have, I have tested Unlimited. those waters. And sometimes it's I have worth tested it, those sometimes waters. it's not. So. Now, as far as three, and I saw. Uh oh. Are we off again? There was there was one more question question that popped up. I wanted to answer it. Oh, oh I think okay. she she asked if any of us have traditionally published or have you all self published? Elizabeth, I am the only person in the entire team who has ever self published. I believe everyone else has traditionally published. Yeah, and I'm a hybrid, obviously. Part woman, okay. part coffee. <laughs> All sexual innuendos. Yeah. <laughs> you should see what I can do with a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, no. no <laughs> I wrote a book about that. And Rebecca, where are you at? Because I swear I'll post things at two o'clock in the morning and you'll still like and comment on them. She just doesn't sleep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Coffee. Yeah. I was I was posting up teasers of the, the fourth book in the asset series. And it was at literally two in the morning. So I'd stayed up all night trying to get the scene perfect. And I'd see the little heart pop up after I'm like, God damn it. It's two in the morning here. Where are you? It's five in the morning. I'm, in morning. Morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm North Carolina. I'm East coast. I am really, really bad at sleeping. Okay. I have had now a grand total of like four and a half hours of sleep since Wednesday. Ooh. Oh my God. I mean, I'm really bad at sleeping, okay? So you're in the hallucination zone. 
You bet you got the creative mind going. I could not hear what she said. <laughs> You're in the hallucination zone. Ah, uh, you still can't I don't hear. know. Are you real? <laughs> <laughs> Just figments of your imagination. Go back to sleep, Becca. <laughs> yep. My cat is giving me a hard stare. Because I know that was not how I expected that sentence to end. I'm not in the chair that he can sit on the back of, so he's like over there what pouting. Are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> thank you, ladies, for hanging out with us tonight. We've hit our right It's been a fun show, and and Becca, you've been what back to back shows? You just did Writer and Perfect and Drinks with Authors. Yep. Anything else for tonight? Yep. And tomorrow I'm going to the bar. All right. Joe's, Joe's bar. bar. I'll be visiting and Joe's bar. hanging out in the chat for Joe's bar. I'll be drinking. <laughs> I mean, I drink I'll every go. day. I don't know why. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks Thank for Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah. Great questions tonight, Elizabeth. Excellent, excellent questions. And I hope that our viewers who watch this on the replay will be able to take advantage of some of the answers you guys have given and check out Three Furies Press as well as your merch, which I'm looking at as soon as we're done here. Yes. Thanks, Thanks for having us on, Katie. Thank Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Sorry, I was all like up coming. and down. <laughs> For everyone watching, Drinks with Authors is every third Friday of the month, and Spilling Ink will return tomorrow night at 5 p.m. for our regular weekly author interviews. We've got two new authors to introduce you to that have never been on the show before, so definitely stop by and watch, and it's right before Ooh. Joe's Bar. Nice. So let's see you tomorrow. See ya. Bye. <laughs>